from the Center for Western Priorities in Denver, this is the Road to 30 virtual tour. Here's the Executive Director of the Center for Western Priorities, Jennifer Rokola. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Jen Rokola, the Executive Director of the Center for Western Priorities. We are excited for you to join us on the second stop on our Road to 30 virtual tour to highlight the bold, future-looking proposal to protect 30% of America's lands and water by 2030. Scientists have urged us to protect at least 30% of our planet's land and water resources as a necessary step to prevent the unraveling of the ecosystems that support all life on this planet. Despite the ongoing challenges we are facing due to the coronavirus pandemic, the 30 by 30 goal is an important path to conserve nature, strengthen communities, and improve public health. This will be a 30-minute conversation, so we hope you'll stay with us for the next half hour. Today, we're focusing on why this effort is important in Colorado and how Coloradans can play an active role in supporting the 30 by 30 initiative. We recognize that here in Colorado, our public and protected lands are on the traditional homelands of indigenous peoples that include the Ute, Apache, Arapaho, and Cheyenne nations, as well as the Pueblo, Shoshone, Comanche, Kiowa, and the Navajo tribes. As the 30 by 30 effort moves forward, collaborative conservation led by indigenous communities will be essential to its, its success. I'd like to introduce our guests who are joining us today. New Mexico Senator Tom Udall is here. He is leading the 30 by 30 initiative in the United States Senate, and we are excited to work with Senator Udall to support his efforts to lead the next bold conservation idea to protect 30% of nature. Senator Udall, welcome to Colorado. Hey, thank you, Jennifer. It's great being in Colorado, and it's wonderful uh, to join you here today. You want me to start, start rolling, or you just want to do the introductions first? Well, let me introduce uh, Kelly. Um, we are we're also joined. <laughs> we are also joined by Kelly Nordini, the executive director of Conservation Colorado. Kelly started her career as a campus organizer for climate change in Colorado over two decades ago, and has played a pivotal role in advancing clean energy and environmental successes in the state ever since. As the head of Conservation Colorado, she oversees robust a robust statewide organization working to protect Colorado's climate, air, water, land, and communities. At, their intersection, at the intersection of all their work is a commitment to racial and environmental justice and accountability. Kelly, thanks for joining us and co-hosting this event with us today. Sure, hi Jen, happy to be with you. Thanks, Senator. Thanks, Good Kelly. And, and we're hoping uh, that we'll be joined by Colorado Congressman Joe Neguse. Uh, Congressman Neguse represents the second congressional district in Congress, or in Colorado. Um, but he, right now he is on the set, or the House floor, um, and he, you know, hopefully will be able to join us. Um, we'll also have some time at the end for our panelists to respond to questions from the audience. So if you'd like to ask a question, feel free to ask it in the chat box on YouTube or Facebook and we'll get to as many questions as we can. But before we turn to our speakers, I'd like to share a brief video to provide the background on why scientists believe we need to pursue a goal of protecting 30% of nature and how Senator Udall is leading this effort in the Senate. My name is Enric Sala, and I am National Geographic Explorer in Residence. I work to save wild places, to restore the richness and productivity of our natural world, I'm Senator Tom Udall from New Mexico. I'm the author of the 30 by 30 resolution to save nature. We have transformed half of the inhabitable land, cutting forests for farms, grazing, and cities. We're losing a football field's worth of nature every 30 seconds. We have replaced wildlife with our domesticated livestock. We have killed 90% of the large fish in the ocean. People have already heard a lot about the threat posed by climate change, but we hear less about the nature crisis. The truth is, we have to solve one to solve the other. They can't be separated. We've been able to see the decline of nature around us because of the work of thousands of scientists working across the world over many years, collecting data on everything from temperature to abundance of species. We're in the middle of a sixth mass extinction. Human beings continue to destroy nature at a devastating rate. B 
between our assault on biodiversity and global warming, we are destroying our life support system. Humanity is deeply reliant on Mother Nature for our way of life. The extinction of one species has profound ripple effects that can alter industries, economies, global health, and security. Imagine a world without bees to pollinate crops or fungi to derive new life-saving medicines from. There is nothing more urgent, in my opinion. Scientists like Dr. Sala tell us we need to protect 30% of the land and water by 2030 and continue at that pace to save nature. If we don't meet this goal by the end of the decade, it's going to be too late. Everything that we will not preserve by 2030 probably will be lost forever. I don't mean to be an alarmist, but being bold is really our only option. I've introduced a bill in the Senate. It's called the 30 by 30 resolution to save nature. It sets a goal for the nation of protecting 30% of our land and water by 2030, with half protected by mid-century. Then there are a variety of policies we can undertake to achieve that goal. New national monuments, wilderness areas, and other protections, establishing wildlife corridors, these corridors will protect biodiversity and species habitat. Reforestation efforts, 30 by 30 is about protecting the best and also restoring the rest. The good news is that when we give nature space, she can bounce back spectacularly and continue providing for us. I have seen places in the ocean that were degraded, that were dead, come back in just a few years after protecting them from our activities. The only way we'll get there is if the American people continue to organize like they have been, to show their leaders that they won't accept anything less than bold action to save our planet. Nature is much more resilient than we think. Nature has this spectacular ability to bounce back if we just give her a little space. If we get to 30 by 30, we can save our planet and make sure our children have a livable world. We can live in better harmony with nature because protecting the planet at the end of the day means protecting humanity. Well, now that we've set the stage for the 30 by 30 initiative, let's turn to our panelists. Senator Udall, I'll start with you. We just heard about your bold leadership as you push for protecting 30% of America by 2030. Why have you become personally invested in this fight to save nature? Well, I, I grew up hiking and camping and fishing, rafting and kayaking all over the West. I have a deep reverence and respect for the beauty and wonder of our lands, our waters and our wildlife. And I feel a deep personal connection to nature. So this fight is personal to me. And for all my life, I've worked to protect our wild lands, our wildlife, the richness of our biodiversity. But now the need to protect the planet has never been more pressing. We face a nature crisis and a climate crisis, dual crises that are interrelated. Together, they threaten human, animal, and plant life as we know it. And we are coming dangerously close to reaching tipping points on both. Human activity threatens one million plant and animal species with extinction. We must listen to science. And scientists like Dr. Sala, who we just heard from in the whiteboard video, are telling us that at a minimum, we must save 30% of the natural world by 2030 to preserve our planet as we know it. So my 30 by 30 resolution to save nature, which I've introduced along with your own Senator Michael Bennett from Colorado takes this bold step. And make no mistake, this is not only a fight to save nature, it's a fight to protect humanity. At least 40% of the world's economy is based on biological resources that give us food, shelter, medicine, economic development. Protecting nature protects humanity. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Now I'd like to hand the mic to Kelly. Kelly, this is a big ambitious goal. 
How has Conservation Colorado engaged in efforts like this in the past? And how do you see all of us working together in the future? Yeah, thanks, Jen. Um, it is a big goal, and we love that about it, um, and really uh, applaud Senator Udall and, and Senator Bennett for their leadership on that. Um, you know, Colorado, we have a long history of this. Um, we, th we do nationally leading policy. Um, we like to set the pace and um, show that you can lead on issues like renewable energy and climate change and public lands. Um, in a state as um, diverse as Colorado. Um, and, um, you know, seeing that kind of leadership come from a state that traditionally has been a fossil fuel producing state, we think also has a, an outsized role to play in the national conversation. So one of the things that we love about this 30 by 30 uh, policy is that it really brings together our top three priorities, which is climate change, uh, lands, and equity. Um, and you can see them all coming together in this 30 by 30 vision. And the video points out that, um, you know, with the 30 by 30 um, goal, we have the potential for um, very significant, you know, generationally important conservation gains while addressing climate change and ensuring that everyone benefits from these conservation measures. And for us, that's just you know, that's the trifecta. That's a home run right there. Um, we're actually working with Western Resource Advocates, which is one of our, our closest partners in the region, on an action plan um, to achieve the 30 by 30 vision um, through state policy um, and, and leveraging the power of state policy. We'll be releasing that um, later this summer uh, and look forward to sharing that with you all. Um, and of course, we're going to have to work with so many partners on, on that action plan and on this 30 by 30 vision, um, not just the folks here on this call, um, you know, tribal communities, um, hunters, fishermen, um, recreationalists, local elected officials are critical in this. And we really see the 30 by 30 vision as a, as a unifying element, um, an opportunity to bring so many different priorities together and, and really leave a legacy. And Colorado wants to be at the forefront of that. No, that's exactly right, Kelly. Thank you. Um, and last week, the Senate passed the Great American Outdoors Act with uh, broad bipartisan support. That bill includes full funding, full permanent funding for the Land and Water Conservation Fund which is often called America's most successful conservation program. And just yesterday, uh, the Center for Western Priorities released our latest winning the West polling from five key states in the upcoming election. And we asked about 30 by 30 specifically, and voters overwhelmingly said that they agree with the goal of protecting 30% of America's land and water by 2030. It was a 60 point margin across all five states. Three quarters of voters uh, support the proposal with just 15% opposed. Uh, Senator Udall, what does polling like that and the bipartisan support for the Great American Outdoors Act mean for the 30 by 30 effort? Well, I, I think the public is there and wants to see that we get this done. And uh, we as leaders at all levels, state, local, and in the federal government, we need uh, to push and grab the moment and get this done. Just to say a word about the Great American Outdoors Act, it fully and permanently funds the Land and Water Conservation Fund. Finally, this was put in place in the 60s. Only one time has it been fully funded, and it makes a substantial down payment on the backlog of deferred maintenance on our public lands. The bill protects the best and restores the rest with $900 million every year towards LWCF and $9.5 billion over five years, making sure our public lands are well maintained. LWCF has expanded and helped conserve millions of acres of U.S. lands over the years. Right here in Colorado, it helps support the Rocky Mountain National Park, Great Sand Dunes National Park, and Mesa Verde National Park, just to name a few. So funding for LWCF gives us an incredible opportunity to greatly expand our public lands, the federal, state, and local levels. And it fits hand in glove with 3030. And finally, beginning to
to tackle the billions of dollars of deferred maintenance on our public lands. That the that restores our special uh, places for the future and for our future generations. Thank you. Thanks, Senator. Um, and uh, the Great American Outdoors Act, as we know, will uh, move on to the House in July, where we hope uh, it gets uh, equally, uh, you know, overwhelming uh, bipartisan support in the House, and then obviously then on to the uh, president for his signature. And I think, uh, you know, one of the things that we've seen in our polling for winning the West is that uh, public lands uh, seem to be a unifying uh, issue uh, in the West, that uh, that these are bipartisan uh, issues and that uh, uh, voters out here really support uh, protection of public lands and initiatives like 30 by 30. Um, so Kelly, uh, working for environmental justice is part of Conservation Colorado's core mission. And I know that includes making America's outdoor spaces more inclusive and welcoming for all people. How can 30 by 30 help towards those goals? Yeah, thanks, Jen. Um, you're right. Equity is centered um, in uh, both of our top two priorities, climate change and um, our work on lands and water protection. Um, and, you know, you take a moment in time like this where we face a pandemic, uh, a depression, uh, a movement to dismantle systemic racism like we haven't seen in, um, in decades, uh, and now a, a nature crisis as well, as the video points out. Um, it, it, that is all connected, um, and we know that all of that is connected, and we will not uh, succeed in addressing all of those if we are not engaged um, and doing that uh, in a way that is centered uh, with equity and justice as, a, as central to those efforts. Uh, from clean water, clean air, public health, climate change, sadly, all of those um, are tied to, to racism and to systemic um, racist practices. Uh, so we have to be really clear on how we get to these goals, given those connections and given that tie to, to racism. Um, and at its core, that means relationships. Um, and that means really um, having, having strong relationships, um, listening, learning, engaging, um, building um, with our allies the kind of tables where um, all of the different folks um, who are engaged in this really can leverage their power and ensure that those policies um, do not continue um, past practices and that we are dismantling those connections to racism that have um, exacerbated and um, really made so many of these issues uh, even more impactful to communities of color. So this is the moment in time for that. We have to get it right. Um, and it, it's a really important part of all of our work. Great. Thanks, Kelly. Uh, and I understand we have a video message from Congressman uh, Joe Neguse. Uh, so I think we're going to play that video now. Hello, everybody. Congressman Joe Neguse here from Colorado's 2nd Congressional District. I'm sorry that I'm unable to join you live today, as I'm currently in Washington, D.C., actually on the floor uh, voting as we speak. But I wanted to quickly thank the Center for Western Priorities and Conservation Colorado for holding this incredibly important and timely conversation. And Senator, Hello, everybody. Congressman Joe Neguse here from Colorado's 2nd Congressional District. I'm sorry that I'm unable to join you live today, as I'm currently in Washington, D.C., actually on the floor uh, voting as we speak. But I wanted to quickly thank the Center for Western Priorities and Conservation Colorado for holding this incredibly important and timely conversation, and Senator Udall for leading the way by introducing a 30 by 30 resolution to save nature in the United States Senate. Public lands are ingrained in our way of life in Colorado. They fuel our outdoor recreation economy, our tourism industry, and Main Street small businesses, and they inspire us each and every day. And conservation of our public lands and oceans is inextricably linked to climate action. Therefore, a commitment to conserve 30% of America's lands and oceans by 2020 uh, is absolutely, uh, excuse me, by 2030 <laughs> is absolutely essential. And as many scientists suggest, is a minimum step that must be taken to pull us back from the tipping point that nature and our climate have reached. 
The 30 by 30 resolution to save nature sets a national goal of conserving at least 30% of the land and 30% of the ocean within the territory of the United States by 2030. Climate change is the existential threat of our time, one that cannot be ignored or idled on, but one that must be met with bold and comprehensive solutions that protect our future and our planet. Conservation of our public lands is key to addressing this existential threat and protecting our planet and for future generations. I am proud to help lead the 30 by 30 resolution in the House along with the Congresswoman Deb Haaland and many others, and I'm proud to be working on additional legislative proposals uh, to protect our public lands. My bill, uh, the Colorado Outdoor Recreation and Economy Act, or the CORE Act, which would permanently protect 400,000 acres of public lands across Colorado, actually passed out of the House of Representatives just last year in October. And we continue to advocate to make these carefully crafted designations and the proposals in this bill a reality. I've also introduced a proposal to create a 21st century conservation core to invest in our young workforce, provide employment opportunities for Americans struggling with COVID-19 recovery, and address the 19 million public maintenance backlog through conservation and restoration of these treasured places. We all know that our environmental future is at risk. We need to work together to save our planet, and that includes all of us. So now is the time for us to provide solutions for this crisis, and now is the time for boldness and for action. Thank you all so much, and I hope to see you soon. That was great. Well, I'm glad Congressman uh, Nagus could join us, even if it's virtually on a virtual event. Um, so I think we're now gonna go to some questions from uh, our viewers. And uh, the first question is for Senator Udall. Uh, Senator Udall, can you talk a little bit about the difference between protected public lands and regular public lands? And how can local solutions like the CORE Act support 30 by 30? Well, I think the important thing here is that to realize these goals we've set when we talk about 3030, we're talking about local goals, state goals, and federal goals. And so combining all together, if all these entities work together on the lands they have within their jurisdiction and additional lands that they may like to purchase from willing uh, sellers, uh, uh, people that have land that want to put a conservation easement or work with the uh, uh, environmental groups to do some protection, all of those things fit in. And the CORE Act is absolutely crucial because there you're moving land that is in federal status right now, but you're more protecting it if you pass that legislation. So you, you in addition, protect 400,000 acres more wilderness in the state of Colorado. So uh, everybody in your delegation, I can see that Congressman Nagus and Senator Bennett and all the others are working hard to meet this goal. And Colorado is such a great state in terms of, of the public lands you have and the public lands you could protect. Great, thanks, uh, Senator Udall. Uh, and Kelly, I know Conservation Colorado has been uh, uh, very involved in the CORE Act. Uh, do you have any thoughts about, uh, you know, next steps on the CORE Act? I know it passed the House. Uh, any hope for it in the Senate? Well, um, that would depend on our senators. <laughs> and we know one's working hard on it. Uh, we would love the other to be working hard on it, too. Um, you know, I think um, it, it's such a tremendous opportunity. The CORE Act really brings together um, such a huge cross-section of Coloradans and different interests. And, you know, honestly, that's what we see with these big lands protection bills is that they can be um, a real unifier and such an opportunity for the local communities. So our hope would be that as um, Congress continues to look at, um, you know, not only continuing relief programs to deal with the pandemic, but starts to think about stimulus programs for um, rebuilding uh, our economy as we come out of, out of this crisis, um, we're going to be advocating for rebuilding better and rebuilding that economy of the future um, that is oriented towards um, our climate change uh, issues, our nature crisis, and grounded in, in a policy like 30 by 30. 
And so we see real opportunities for that. Uh, there is no reason that um, the stimulus can't uh, be a really important opportunity to further um, a vision like 30 by 30 and invest in these communities and give them a future um, that is um, environmentally sustainable and good for their local economies. And the CORE Act is just such a, a great example of that. So we're going to push every step of the way and look for every single window to get it done. That's great. Thanks, Kelly. So it looks like we have another question from uh, one of our viewers, and it's, does the Great American Outdoors Act also include funding for private lands that have to participate in this connectivity and attract conservation buyers to create buffers around public lands? Uh, Senator Udall, um, I don't know if you want to take a shot at that question. Sure. The, the, um, the Great American Dar Outdoors Act has two parts. One is fully funding the Land and Water Conservation Fund, which many of those funds are used at the state level and used also half of them at the federal level. And many times, if there are lands that are in holdings in a national park or a monument, those funds can be used to purchase in holdings, or they can in additionally be used to preserve funds that are near, nearby that are maybe part of the ecosystem. So the answer to the question is definitely yes. And then the other important part of the Great, Great American Outdoors Act is maintenance of our national parks, bringing them up to the standard, uh, which is a very high standard that's in the law to protect them for future generations. Great, thank you, Senator. Uh, Kelly, any thoughts on that? Uh, I know it's specific to the Great American Outdoors Act. Yeah, no, I, I think um, just echoing what the senator said, you know, um, there's a, a lot of flexibility and we know how to do these um, uh, big plans to protect these really important um, uh, large scale landscapes uh, in a way that works for everyone. And um, that, you know, the core act's been a decade in the making, <laughs> or even longer uh, maybe than that because of the time that's been taken to engage all sorts of stakeholders and, and deal with exactly these kinds of issues. So we have the flexibility, we have the tools, we just need the political will to get it done. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, I think we have time for one more question and that question is, um, what can individuals do to best help 30 by 30? Well, I'll weigh in on that if I can. Um, uh, you know, we're about to have an election uh, and elections have consequences and elections set priorities. And so um, I would encourage you to do anything you can to make sure that folks know, your friends, your family, your decision makers, other leaders, what your priorities are in, in this election. What are you, what values are you bringing to that ballot um, and making your decisions based on? And um, we know that the public overwhelmingly supports these issues, um, wants to protect land, wants to address climate change, wants to leave this legacy for our kids, wants to have everyone benefit from clean air and water. Um, and the only way we get there is if people vote on those values. Jennifer. Thanks, Senator Udall. Yep. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, any thoughts on what individuals can do to support yeah. the 30 by 30 well, effort? First, first of all, I to totally agree with Kelly. There's just no doubt everybody needs to get out and vote. But just think for a minute. If you live in a city and you see a way to expand a park or start a new park, you can do that through your city councils and city councilors and your mayor. If you live in a state, and there's an opportunity of a state monument or a state park that could be expanded or a new one that could be created, you can stand up for it and work with your governor and your legislature and get it done. And at the federal level, now that we have, uh, we're on the brink of passing the Great American Outdoors Act and providing additional resources, we can look at those special areas. We can create wildlife corridors. That's legislation I have before the Congress now, where we start restoring many of the lands that are out there that need to be brought up to the point where they can really help with these dual crises in terms of the nature crisis and the climate crisis. So let's all get out and pitch in. This is a goal for everyone. 
That's great. Well, thank you, uh, Senator Udall, and thank you, Kelly Nardini, for joining us today. Uh, that will wrap up our Colorado Road to 30 virtual event. Uh, thank you. Uh, if you'd like more information about the Road to 30 initiative or to learn more about the Road to 30 virtual tour, please visit our website at roadto30.org. We'll be sharing updates about the tour there. So we hope to see all, you, all of you soon. Thanks. Thanks, Jen. Thank you, Jen. Thank you.